H1 antihistaminic drugs or H1 blockers are drugs that block H1 receptor. These drugs can be divided on two generations. Here we can see a list of H1 blockers. As you see, we have two subtypes. It's first generation of H1 blockers and the second generation. The first and second generations have some similar features, but also they are quite different. And to explain this, we have to know where H1 receptors are located in our organism. First of all, we have H1 receptors in the nasal mucosa. The stimulation of H1 receptor in nasal mucosa causes production of mucus. In the blood vessels, stimulation of H1 receptor causes increase in permeability of the blood vessel, and this can cause edema in tissues. But also, we have H1 receptor in airways. Recall that airflow is equal to pressure difference divided on resistance, and resistance is inversely proportional to the force power of radius. The activation of H1 receptor in airways causes bronchoconstriction. With bronchoconstriction, the radius in the airways decrease and thereby resistance increase. And with increase in resistance, airflow decrease, which can be quite dangerous in patients with asthma, for example. In addition to this, we have H1 receptors in the nerve endings, especially in the skin, where activation of H1 receptor can cause pain, pruritus, and itching. But also, to explain the effects of H1 blockers, we have to know the location of two other receptors. We have alpha-1 receptor in the blood vessels. Activation of alpha-1 receptor causes vasoconstriction. Recall that blood pressure is equal to cardiac output on systemic vascular resistance. And resistance is inversely proportional to the force power of radius. So alpha-1 receptor provides vasoconstriction. With constriction of the blood vessels, radius decrease, resistance increase. With increase in resistance, blood pressure increase. So alpha-1 receptor is important in regulation of the blood pressure. Also, we have muscarinic receptors. One of the organs that has muscarinic receptor is urinary bladder where M3 receptor provides increase in contractility, and increase in contractility causes urination. Brain is quite a unique organ. In terms of H1 blockers, we have to know that brain has serotonin receptor, and activation of serotonin receptor causes decrease in appetite. And also, brain has H1 receptor. This receptor provides vomiting reflex and also H1 receptor participates in neurotransmission. Now, if person intakes H1 blocker of the first generation as diphenhydramine, meclizine, promethazine, and ciproheptidine, all these drugs block H1 receptor. First of all, they block H1 receptor in nasal mucosa, and by this they can decrease mucus production. This can be very helpful in case if patient has runny nose or sneezing. Also, H1 blockers block H1 receptor on the blood vessels, which can decrease permeability of the capillaries. And by this, the severity of the edema will decrease. This can be very helpful in case of allergy. By blockage of H1 receptor in airways, H1 blockers can decrease the severity of bronchoconstriction. Radius increase, resistance decrease, and thereby airflow increase. It's not very potent effect, but it can help in case of allergic reaction in patients with asthma. But it's not by any means major drug in asthma treatment. By blockage of H1 receptor on neural endings, we can decrease the severity of pain, pruritus, and itching, which is really helpful in case of skin allergic reaction. Now, the next three features make the first generation of H1 blockers different from the second generation. First of all, the first generation of H1 blockers mimic the effect of alpha-1 blockers. Thereby, they block alpha-1 receptors on the blood vessels. As a result, vasoconstriction decreases, thereby radius increase, resistance decreases, 
and thereby blood pressure decrease. And abrupt decrease in blood pressure can cause orthostatic hypotension. Also, the first generation of H1 blockers can mimic the effect of muscarinic blockers. We call this atropine-like effect. As a result, the contractility of the urinary bladder decreases, and thereby sometimes they can cause urinary retention. And the third unique feature of the first generation of H1 blockers is their lipophilic properties. Recall that brain is protected by blood-brain barrier, which is impermeable for hydrophilic substances. H1 blockers of the first generation are lipophilic, and because of this, they can cross through the blood-brain barrier. In the brain, they can mimic the effect of serotonin blockers, and by this, they can increase appetite. Increase in appetite in some cases can be favorable effect, but for some patients, weight gain can be considered as a side effect. Also, H1 blockers in the brain tissue block H1 receptor. First of all, by this they inhibit vomiting reflex, which can be really helpful in case of motion sickness. And also, by blockage of H1 receptor, they inhibit neurotransmission, and by this they can cause sedation. In some cases, for example in case of annoying child, this can be very helpful. But in case of old patient, dizziness and somnolence can be even dangerous. And because of this, we try not to use the first generation of H1 blockers in the old category of patients. The second generation of H1 blockers include drugs as cetirizine, loratadine and fexofenadine. They also block all available H1 receptors. By blockage of H1 receptor in nasal cavity, they can decrease mucus production, so we can use them in case of runny nose or sneezing. They block H1 receptor in the blood vessels, and thereby they can decrease edema, which can really help in allergy. By blockage of H1 receptor in airways, they decrease the severity of bronchoconstriction, and thereby they can improve airflow which can be useful in case of asthma. By blockage of H1 receptor in the nerve endings, they can decrease the severity of pain, pruritus and itching, which can be very useful in case of skin allergy. But in contrast to the first generation, the second generation is more selective. The second generation do not mimic the effect of alpha-1 blockers, so they do not cause hypotension. They also do not mimic the effect of atropine, and thereby they do not cause urinary retention. And also, they are hydrophilic substances, which means that they cannot cross blood-brain barrier, and because of this, they do not affect appetite, they do not inhibit vomiting reflex, and they do not cause sedation. So, all H1 blockers have similar effects. They block all available H1 receptors, which are localized in nasal mucosa, in blood vessels, in airways, and in the nerve endings. But also, they are quite different. The first generation are lipophilic substances, which means that they can cross blood-brain barrier, and thereby they can affect CNS. Also, the first generation can mimic the effect of alpha-1 blockers and muscarinic blockers which can cause some side effects. The second generation are more selective. They are hydrophilic and thereby they cannot penetrate through the blood-brain barrier. And also, they do not mimic the effect of any other blockers, so they have lesser side effects.